Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my home. Today is such an exciting video. I have been waiting in anticipation for this video to come along for multiple reasons, but I love fall. I love autumn. It's one of my favorite seasons, if not my favorite season. And it also means that it's a close of gardening and canning and freezing season as well. And that means that I'm going into a season of more restfulness, school starts, we homeschool. So that begins a new season as well. And I just love the cooler days and of course all of the cozy sweaters. I have a lot I wanna share with you all today. A lot of things that have been on my mind lately. So as you can see, I'm getting a hot drink started to go with me through this day. So I have five budget-friendly tips for seasonal decor as we go into this video. If you all know, I really enjoy a minimal space, but I think a lot of times in the minimal world, a lot of minimal people, minimal home experts will tell you that seasonal decor is unnecessary and just kind of thrown out the window. And as much as I enjoy my minimal spaces, I still love celebrating each season. And most of all, I could live in a room with very little. I could live in a space with very little. But you know, my family enjoys seeing my seasonal decorations. So it's not just about me. It's also about the things that my family enjoys as well. So my tip number one is to pick an area or room of your home. A really easy way to do this is to pick an outdoor space, whether it's your front door or your front porch. I decided to do my kitchen space as well as our porch area that's outside of this. We have kind of a deck and screened in porch that's all connected. But I didn't put any decor or seasonal decor throughout the rest of the house. By picking one space, you don't feel pressured to spend a lot of money on a lot of decor, but you can still enjoy decorating for the season. Tip number two is to set an actual budget. This is the first year that I've really honed in on doing this, and you are probably going to start hearing me share more and more about limits. Sometimes limits are helpful, and if you're trying to save a little money, I look at setting a budget for myself as kind of a game to see how much I can get within my budget. These are the things that I got with the budget I set for myself. I wanted to shoot for about $40 for this year, and that might be a lot to some of you. That might not be very much to some of you. Everyone has their own means they want to live within. And so I'm going to show you what I got. My total I just checked on my receipt was $39.25, <laughs> and I wasn't really counting. I was loosely counting, so... Pretty happy that I stayed pretty well within that. So I got a doormat. I love getting a new doormat for every season. I think it's just a fun way and everyone sees it that comes in your door. Um, so it's a fun way to just celebrate the change of season. So the doormat was around $10. Um, I wanted something for the middle of the table. And so I got this little tray, but it actually was a wall hanging. So I'm gonna take that little wall hanging thing off of the top and on sale, this was around $15. And then I needed a vase for some pompous grass I have that I wanna add to a vase. So found something that I could use for that. This was about $5. And then this little painting I thought was just precious. I just think it's so cute. I have a little plan for this as well and i can't remember it is 5.49 and i think it was 50 percent off so it would have been around two or three dollars for that little guy and then i also wanted some dried wheat or barley i can't remember which one this is if you know let me know in the comments and this here was also about five dollars so I really feel like I filled in some gaps from my stuff from last year without breaking the bank, without spending too much. 
and I'm able to really make use of these pieces and make statement pieces out of them. Okay, so here's what I had from last year and ex with the exception of a couple of things I'm using outside today. And a little rule I have with myself is if I do not use it, I do not store it again. So I'm not going to save things for next year that I'm not going to use for this year. These two things, this piece and those salt and pepper shakers all came from the crazy markdowns that Hobby Lobby does. I think I probably paid around a dollar for each of those items and it's just a great way to snag things for the next year if you know you're going to use it and you know you're going to like it. Tip number three, and this is probably my biggest tip. This is something that God has been working in my heart and that is to seek contentment. I've come to the absolute conclusion that you cannot live a minimal life or have a minimal home without contentment. Contentment is something that I don't really think we can necessarily seek on our own. I think that we can try, but it's very difficult. But I see how much God is helping to bring contentment to my heart and realize that I don't need the next best thing. You don't need the thing that you saw on Instagram today. And you can simply enjoy the things that you have already in your home. And I just see how much I love being in my home. I see how much I focus a lot less on the things in my home and more on my family whenever I am seeking contentment and just enjoying the things I have. I think in our fast paced culture, we truly don't even get time to enjoy what we already have. We are getting one thing and then not even taking the time for enjoyment before we're looking for the next thing that somehow is going to make life better. And I've been guilty of this. I really have seen myself jumping from one thing to the next and not just enjoying and savoring the things that I've created. I'm a creative person and I love creating spaces and sharing that all with you all. But sometimes my eye is on the next area in my house that I want to do something creative with instead of truly savoring what I have created. So let me know in the comments, what are some things that you have found if you have been able to conquer the big, monster of discontentment. Let me know if there's any tips you have for just truly finding full contentment, particularly in our homes and the spaces that we have to make our home in. I would love to hear your tips and the things that you may have to share about contentment. And I know that my other viewers will enjoy what you have to say as well. So definitely let those comments down below on how you all have found ways to be content with the things that you have. So as you can see, I'm just going through my kitchen and I am putting out the things that I showed you in the beginning. And one thing I decided to do is I had these little dropper bottles. I actually have a whole box of them because I do on occasion make homemade tinctures. And I thought it would be really fun to put my stevias. Yes, I'm dumping from one bottle to the other. I know some people think that's a little silly to put things in other bottles, but I just thought these looked so pretty. The amber glass just looked so warm and inviting along with my other fall decor. And then I had this little labeler. So this didn't cost me anything to make these dropper bottles for my stevia to put into my winter drinks and it just kind of makes me smile. I love little labels and things like that. And then in the little pumpkin that you saw next to those droppers, I put some pumpkin spice seasoning to put in my coffees. And then I'll use that little pitcher kind of as a spoon rest. Whenever I'm mixing things up, I can stick it in there. So I took down the pothos plant that was on top of my refrigerator. I put that in my sunroom just to give it a break from this kind of shady area put up some pumpkins and another little plant that had been sitting in the sunroom on there. I like to swap my plants around the house, giving them each a turn in the sun and making sure that they stay nice and healthy. 
So this little section next to my stove is one that we use so often. I love having our oils out and the salt and pepper. Someone recently asked me where I got those. I'll try to remember to leave them linked below, but they are super convenient whenever you're cooking just to grab a scoop of salt or pepper to add to your recipe. Number four is check end of season sales. I mentioned this when I was showing you all the things I got from last year, but it is so true. And obviously this is going to pull in practicing some patience <laughs> because you're gonna purchase things for maybe the winter decor or the fall decor and you're gonna have to wait until the next year to use them but I promise when you open up your box of decor you're gonna be so excited to use those things that you didn't get to use in the last season and you can truly find things for so inexpensive especially at Hobby Lobby I've been able to find things for a dollar even under a dollar whenever the season ends. So next to the sink here, I'm putting these apples in this little um, market tote thing. And honestly, I may end up taking these out because we've been buying local apples and they've been hanging here. But the day before I filmed this, we ate the last of them. <laughs> so I'm not sure that those will stay in that bag. All right. So tip number five I have for you is shop local and save. So for the last two years, and this was from two different farms, I went to pumpkin farms and I was able to get pumpkins at a much lower price simply because I bought them straight from the pumpkin farm. This year we went somewhere different than we did last year, but both of them were local farmers that basically said, hey, since I don't have to pick them, I will give you a better deal on them and we paid a lot less for some beautiful pumpkins. This also applies to Christmas trees or to greenery. If you go to a Christmas tree farm, you may even be able to get some sprigs of greenery for free that fell off of the trees or that they cut off of the trees to use around your house. So definitely checking out those types of resources if you have them near you is a great way to save a little bit of money and enjoy the seasonal decor. And if you have children, this is such a fun outing to take them on. So like I said, I wanted to add some more fall to my deck and porch area. If you all watched my outdoor decor video, then you probably saw the bulk of this. So I'm just popping a few pumpkins in here around the planters. And I'm so excited to see these planters in their full bloom. We've had a good bit of heat here in central Pennsylvania in the last couple of weeks and so I've been really trying to keep everything watered as well as I can so that we end up with beautiful blooms in the end. The next space I tackled was our screened in porch area and to be honest this also needed a little bit of cleaning so I decided to go ahead and clean it before I put everything out. I just wiped down the surfaces. They get a little bit dusty being out here and then we do vacuum regularly out here as well. This is almost like another living room for us in the evenings after dinner. We often sit out here and just talk as a family and it's just a really enjoyable space and I know going into the fall we will be out here a lot because it's under a roof. If it's raining we can still sit in here and it's perfectly fine. So after I wiped down a lot of the surfaces I took a lint roller over the couch. It's just a really easy way to clean outdoor furniture. Um, because it often gets dusty and it's an easy way without a vacuum cleaner to just clean off your outdoor cushions and like I told you uh, my favorite thing is to get a new doormat for each season and it doesn't always happen but it's usually top of my list when it comes to getting something for the new season and I love this black checkered mat I have underneath of here. It's held up so well and I truly think that I probably will use it in my winter decor as well. So it's just a nice base for pretty much any doormat. 
and then I'm popping a big mum in the middle of this table. I had thought about getting more mums for this space and even putting mums in the place of my hanging ferns, but again, trying not to overspend on seasonal decor, particularly just knowing that I had gotten the stuff for the planter boxes out on the deck and I just decided to go ahead and get this big mum. And again, I got it for a discount price from a local farmer. So it really was a great steal. I actually only paid $5 for it. And if you're someone that gets mums and pumpkins in the fall, you know, that's a great deal. Adding touches of fall to this outdoor space was so fun. And of course, going to pick the pumpkins <laughs> was really fun too. I am so excited to see all of my mums out here bloom. These little green guys here, here, and in my railing boxes are all mums that are going to be a burnt orange color here in a couple of weeks. So it will complement the pumpkins so well. And then heading up in to the screened in porch. Oh, I have to show you all. If you watched my porch decorate video, then you remember me planting this. Look how much it's grown. It was just a little plant. Sorry if the bugs are making all their noises in the background, but now it's just grown into this beautiful, large plant that I have been enjoying so much. So heading up here into the screened in porch, I decided to leave my ferns hanging up because they are still going strong and I figured that they will probably hang in there until frost. So I decided to just leave them up and enjoy them through the fall season as well. And then I have this big beautiful mum here in the middle. This is getting ready to bloom. It has lots and lots of little buds on it and in the next couple of weeks it will be blooming so I'm sure I will include clips of all of my mums blooming through the fall in my videos so stay tuned for that. I love the pumpkins that are in here and we use this space a lot so I know that through the cooler months into the fall season we will be out here in our sweatshirts and cozy blankets and cozy socks enjoying this little space. I am so excited to have my fall decor up. I have one of those paper mache pumpkins down here with my Swiss cheese plant by the door. And then up here, obviously you saw the centerpiece with the pumpkins and this is a salt and pepper shaker here. And then those candle holders are thrifted. You can find a lot of decor pieces thrifted, even seasonal decor or things you can use for seasonal decor. Okay, so over here to this side, you can look out and you can see the big huge mum that's sitting there and some of the pumpkins. It's fun to be able to look through my doors and be able to see all of my decor out on the porches as well. Then going this way, I really kind of to kind of tone things down. I had some pops of green and just kind of swapped those things out. Since I'm often drinking a lot of warm drinks in the cooler months, I love having a little coffee bar area. If you all have been here a long time, then you might remember the huge coffee bar I used to have in our old house. It was a, another farmhouse a long time ago. <laughs> and I used to really go all out. And I haven't set up a little coffee area like this for quite some time. So I'm super excited to use that. And I know it's gonna be fun in the mornings to make my hot drinks before we start homeschool. Just kind of gives me my little space to do that with. Then up here, I gave a fun little pop of fall with those pumpkins and another plant, giving my other plant its little break in the sunroom. Since this area doesn't get a whole lot of sun, there you can see the little peep of the pumpkins in the laundry room. I love that wreath. It kind of shows through even from the doorway here. And we've got some dishes in the sink because this is real life. <laughs> And then I just kind of jazzed up that little hook area as well. I really love that little area. It's kind of useful. And then in this little corner, I put this big gourd type thing. I've had this thing forever. In fact, I think I've had this since we lived in the old farmhouse. If you all remember, let me know. And then I just put the other little wreath I had there underneath of that. 
So it's kind of minimal. It's not crazy, but it gives the little touches of autumn and fall. Another thing I did is I put this rug back down. I had taken this up for the canning season with tomatoes and corn and all of that. It just gets really messy on the floor in here. And so now I put that back down just to keep my feet warm in the cooler months that are to come. I hope this video inspired you, made you think a little bit. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like, comment below. Let me know, have you started looking for fall items or putting up fall items in your home? I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you guys in the next one.